who looks outside, dreams, who looks inside, awakes. We cannot change anything until we accept it. Condemnation does not liberate, it oppresses. There is no coming to consciousness without pain. The debt we owe to the play of imagination is incalculable. Knowledge rests not upon truth alone, but upon error also. Often the hands will solve a mystery that the intellect has struggled with in vain. It all depends on how we look at things, and not how they are in themselves. Great talents are the most lovely and often the most dangerous fruits on the tree of humanity. They hang upon the most slender twigs that are easily snapped off. A man who has not passed through the inferno of his passions has never overcome them. Where love rules, there is no will to power, and where power predominates, love is lacking. One is the shadow of the other. The creation of something new is not accomplished by the intellect, but by the play instinct acting from inner necessity. The creative mind plays with the objects it loves. Shame is a soul-eating emotion. The rational attitude which permits us to declare objective values as valid at all is not the work of the individual subject, but the product of human history. Nothing has a stronger influence psychologically on their environment and especially on their children than the unlived life of the parent. The least of things with a meaning is worth more in life than the greatest of things without it. To ask the right question is already half the solution of a problem. To me dreams are part of nature, which harbors no intention to deceive but expresses something as best it can. The capacity for directed thinking I call intellect, the capacity for passive or undirected thinking I call intellectual intuition. Sometimes, indeed, there is such a discrepancy between the genius and his human qualities that one has to ask oneself whether a little less talent might not have been better. I have always been impressed by the fact that there are a surprising number of individuals who never use their minds if they can avoid it, and an equal number who do use their minds, but in an amazingly stupid way. Everything that irritates us about others can lead us to a better understanding of ourselves. Whether they apply themselves to good things or to bad. And if this is lacking, no teacher can supply it or take its place. A dream that is not understood remains a mere occurrence, understood it becomes a living experience. A special ability means a heavy expenditure of energy in a particular direction, with a consequent drain from some other side of life. We should not pretend to understand the world only by the intellect. We apprehend it just as much by feeling. Therefore, the judgment of the intellect is, at best, only the half of truth, and must, if it be honest, also come to an understanding of its inadequacy. If a man knows more than others, he becomes lonely. I regret many follies which sprang from my obstinacy, but without that trait I would not have reached my goal. As any change must begin somewhere, it is the single individual who will experience it and carry it through. The change must indeed begin with an individual, it might be any one of us. Nobody can afford to look round and to wait for somebody else to do what he is loath to do himself. The greatest and most important problems of life are all fundamentally insoluble. They can never be solved but only outgrown.